Thank you for inviting me to address this meeting. I should warn you that my students have to sit through a 12 hour lecture on this topic. I'm gonna to try to consolidate this as much as I can. Uh, in 2019, in a 2019 New York Times op-ed, former National Security Advisor Susan Rice wrote, following D-Day, my father was sent to the West Coast to prepare for deployment to the Pacific Theater. He was spared combat by President Harry Truman's decision to drop atomic weapons on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, provoking the Japanese surrender. In writing this, uh, Susan Rice was either consciously or unconsciously perpetuating a lie that had been at the heart of American exceptionalism for now 75 years. The idea that dropping the atomic bombs was the only way to force Japanese surrender without a US invasion, that would have been extremely costly in terms of American lives and Japanese lives. The logic goes that therefore, the atomic bombs were not only justified, but they were actually the most humane way to end the war uh, in terms of saving human lives. The sad truth is that the atomic bombs were not necessary to end the Pacific War and that uh, without the invasion and that American leaders starting with Harry Truman were fully aware of this. In fact, Japanese leaders had for months understood that they could not win militarily. That was the understanding that had begun with the loss of the Battle of Saipan in July of 1944 and had continued through the end of the war. In February 1945, Prince Kanoe, the three-time former Japanese prime minister, wrote to the emperor and said, I regret to say that Japan's defeat is inevitable. In May 1945, Japanese leaders formally decided to approach the Soviet Union to try to help them secure better surrender terms from the US. They especially objected to the US demand for unconditional surrender, which could lead to the trial and execution of the emperor, who many Japanese considered a deity. As General Douglas MacArthur's Southwest Pacific Command wrote in a background briefing during the summer of July, 1945, the execution of the emperor to them would be like the crucifixion of Christ to us. All would fight to die like ants. Realizing the importance of this, most of Truman's advisors urged him to change the surrender terms and assure the Japanese they'd be allowed to keep the emperor, which was in US interest after the war. But Truman instead relied on the one person or the major person who opposed that, and that was James Burns. Burns became Secretary of State on July 3rd, 1945. Burns kept warning Truman that if he let the Japanese keep the emperor, he'd be politically crucified. Uh, Americans were aware of Japan's desperation to end the war weeks, if not months, prior to dropping the atomic bombs. The US had broken Japanese codes and was intercepting Japanese cables, which repeated over and over again the Japanese desire to quit the war if they could get better surrender terms. Truman himself referred to the intercepted July 13th cable on July 18th as the telegram from the Jap emperor asking for peace. All of his close advisors shared that understanding. American leaders knew that there was also another way to end the war without using atomic bombs and that was to wait for the Soviet entry into the war. At Yalta in February of 45, Stalin finally acceded to US and British requests for the Soviets to enter the war three months after the end of the war in Europe, which would place the date around, July, around August 8th or August 9th. Uh, Allied intelligence had been saying for months that Soviet entry into the war would prove the death knell to, Japanese, to the Japanese war effort. On April 11th, 1945, the Joint Intelligence Staff of the Joint Chiefs of Staff predicted, quote, if at any time the USSR should enter the war, all Japanese will realize that absolute defeat is inevitable. They repeated that on subsequent occasions. 
Little more than one month later, Japan's Supreme War Council drew a similar conclusion. Quote, at the present moment, when Japan is waging a life or death struggle against the U.S. and British Empire, against the U.S. and Britain, Soviet entry into the war will deal a death blow to the Japanese Empire. Over lunch on July 17th at Potsdam, Stalin assured Truman that the Soviets were coming in on time. Truman wrote in his diary, Stalin will be in the Jap war by August 15th. Finny Japs when that occurred. He wrote to his wife, Bess, the next day. The Russians are coming in, quote, we'll end the war a year sooner now. Think of all the kids who won't be killed. To Japanese leaders, the atomic bombings, horrible as they were, did not change the strategic equation. The Soviet invasion, which began at midnight on August 8th, two days after the bombing of Hiroshima, did change the equation. The Red Army, as expected, destroyed the once mighty Kwantung Army in Manchuria. When Prime Minister Kantaro Suzuki was asked on August 13th why Japan needed to surrender so quickly, he responded, Japan must surrender or quote, the Soviet Union will take not only Manchuria, Korea, Karafuto, but also Hokkaido. This would destroy the foundation of Japan. We must end the war when we can deal with the United States, unquote. By this point, the U.S. had firebombed 100 Japanese cities. Destruction reached 99.5% in the city of Toyama. The Japanese understood the U.S. could wipe out their cities. Hiroshima and Nagasaki were two more cities that the Japanese leaders were prepared to sacrifice for the war effort. But the Soviet invasion represented the nightmare scenario that they had been desperately trying to avoid. And now it brought surrender. Post-war American myth makers clung to the idea that the bombs made it possible to avoid the invasion. The number of American lives supposedly saved has kept climbing over the years from thousands to 100,000 to a quarter of a million to a half million, and then in the words later of Truman and George H.W. Bush, to even higher numbers than that, a million and, and more. Uh, few prior to Gar Alperwitz's path-breaking 1965 book, Atomic Diplomacy, dared acknowledge that the real target of the atomic bombings was not Japan, but the Soviet Union. Within 11 days of taking office on August 12, 1945, on April, on April 12, 1945, on April 23rd, when Truman met with Molotov, he accused the Soviet foreign minister of having broken all of the Soviet agreements at Yalta. This was not true. But Roosevelt's friendly relations with the Soviet Union and post-war plans had been reversed in a matter of 10 or 11 days. Uh, as Brigadier General Leslie Groves, who directed the Manhattan Project, admitted, quote, there was never from about two weeks from the time I took charge of this project, any illusion on my part that Russia was our enemy and the project was conducted on that basis. Burns told American scientists in late May that the bombs were needed not to defeat Japan, but to drive the Soviets out of Eastern Europe. Others share that same message the nuclear arms race soon began. Soviet leader understood why the bombs were dropped and the world has been lucky to have survived as long as it has. The truth would occasionally, however, break through the dense cloud of falsehood surrounding the atomic bombs and the Japanese surrender. The official National Museum of the US Navy in Washington, DC, now clearly states in its display on the atomic bomb, quote, the vast destruction wreaked by the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki made little impact on the Japanese military. However, the Soviet invasion of Manchuria on August 9th changed their minds. Few know that seven of America's eight 
five-star admirals and generals in 1945 are on record as saying that the atomic bombs were either militarily unnecessary, morally reprehensible, or both. No one has stated this more powerfully than Admiral William Leahy, who was Truman's personal chief of staff and chaired the meetings of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, Leahy said, the Japanese were already defeated and ready to surrender. The use of this barbarous weapon at Hiroshima and Nagasaki was of no material assistance in our war against Japan. In being first to use it, we adopted an ethical standard common to the barbarians of the Dark Ages. General Eisenhower reported on his Potsdam conference with Secretary of War Stimson. Quote, I told him I was against it on two counts. First, the Japanese were ready to surrender and it wasn't necessary to hit them with that awful thing. Second, I hated to see our country be the first to use such a weapon. General Douglas MacArthur told former President Herbert Hoover that if Truman has, had accepted Hoover's May 1945 advice to change the surrender terms, quote, the Japanese would have accepted it and gladly, I have no doubt, possibly ending the war a month or two sooner than actually occurred and saving more lives. But instead, as a scientist feared and warned, the Soviets interpreted the atomic bombings as ruthless acts of aggression against them. They knew better than anyone else of Japan's desperation to surrender. They knew that the atomic bombs were completely unnecessary from a military point of view. It was precisely the gratuitous nature of the bombings that haunted Marshal Zhukov's memories 26 years later, when he stated, quote, it was clear already then that the US government intended to use the atomic weapon for the purpose of achieving its imperialist goals from a position of strength in the Cold War. This was amply corroborated on August 6th and 8th without any military need whatsoever. The Americans dropped two atomic bombs on the peaceful and densely populated Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. As physicist Yuli Karaton recalled, quote, the whole Soviet government interpreted Hiroshima as atomic blackmail against the USSR as a threat to unleash a new, even more terrible and devastating war. But Truman understood it. And he understood that it went even deeper because Truman knew that he was beginning a process that threatened the future existence of life on this planet. And he said so on numerous occasions when he was at Potsdam on July 25th and got the full briefing of how powerful the bomb test was in Alamogordo. He wrote in his diary, this may be the fire destruction prophesied in the Euphrates Valley era after Noah and his fabulous ark. Not a more powerful weapon, not a more deadly weapon, but the fire destruction. And he said this on other occasions. To kill hundreds of thousands of innocent Japanese is a war crime. To launch the Cold War and the nuclear arms race is a horrible crime against humanity. But to threaten life on our planet completely with annihilation goes far beyond the other crimes that Truman committed. We've been living with this sort of Damocles hanging over our heads as a species ever since. That reality persists today which is why it's so essential to look again at the history of the atomic bombings and to once and for all remove this threat that hangs over Americans, Russians, Chinese, and everybody else on our planet. Thank you.